<laughs> Welcome back to my Let's Play for Pokemon Silver and my run through the game with just a team of Delibirds. I suppose it's time to try and um, deal with Red proper, you know? Though I did have to level up one of my Delibirds up to level 100 to even stand a chance. Because Delibird is just that awful. Now let's see, do I have any um, repels on hand? I would assume so. Oh, I just have one Max Repel? Well, darn, I'm gonna wish I'd bought some more, aren't I? I mean, I can make it work, it's just, you know, ugh. We're gonna be running into some annoying Pokémon at some point, I'm sure of it. Okay. Okay. Darn, I hate moving through the dark. It's such a pain in the butt. Ugh. Got it. Okay. I know, I know, I can't talk much while I'm doing that stuff, but it's just tense, you know, trying to figure out where I'm at. But okay, it's time to take on Red. Ugh, this is gonna suck. I just know it's gonna suck. I mean, my level 100 Delibird probably isn't gonna be able to reliably take out his level 80 Pikachu. Unless it gets a crit. And I ain't got high hopes for that. Jeez. Aura Beam, I guess. And hope for the best. I mean, it is a Pikachu. <laughs> okay, we got it. If only just barely, apparently. Charizard, eh? Well... We get stabbed with both of these. Headbutt would be nice just to try and, you know, flinch it so I can get within killing range, though. Come on, headbutt, please flinch. Yeah, I feared it would fail me. And that's probably gonna knock me out. Who we actually survived. F okay, fly. Fly like your life depended on it, Deli Bird. Now hopefully that style's enough to finish this. Okay. And next he's about to use Espeon. Ah oh, man. This is gonna bite. Well, let's go for a fly, I guess. Dodge the Psychic and just try and come down on this thing hard. I admit we could have used Aura Beam, but I figured a physical attack might be a bit better. And yeah, I know, I, I came prepared to use some revives here. Yeah, the foe's weak, but Hercule ain't doing jack squat. Okay. Let's get that, um, revive in there. After all, I suspect Hercule's gonna get brutalized here. Yep. Dead. And just one psychic blast. Says a lot about, you know, how good Delibird is, right? Well, headbutt. At least I'm faster than Espeon, thanks to being, you know, so many levels above it. No, 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 send out your Snorlax. Okay, Hyper Potion. Yeah, I probably should have leveled up, you know, the rest of my Delibirds up to max level, but... I really couldn't bring myself to bother. That's gonna be annoying, since I only brought X specials with me. I do have some X attacks, never mind. Of course, that's probably gonna paralyze me, if not basically kill me in one hit. Oh, it didn't kill me. Well, good. Hopefully, it doesn't get, you know, a critical hit in there. 
Well, definitely have to cure that off. You know what? We'll just go full restore. I got 20 of them. I might as well use them. Yeah, there's no way I'm taking down Red without items, as we've already established. Not unless I brought, you know, like, six well, level 100 Deli Birds. And that's just a Deli Bird too many, man. Okay. I'll take it. On the nose, if I have to. I was hoping, you know, Snorlax would try more, um, freaking uh, amnesias. The prep its special defense, but they're like, nah. Come on. Headbutt. Come on, get me a lucky flinch, will ya? If I can get that, you know, I can probably knock this thing out at this point. Ah, come on. Ugh, just finish it. I guess thankfully Red's not willing to use any items on me. That's about the only plus that I got right now. Yep, Venusaur. Well, I'll go with Fly. I mean, it's a physical stab, so we can probably do quite a bit with it. Plus, it works better with my X attacks I've used. If I used some X specials, I probably would try just Aura Beaming it to death. And next comes out our last challenge, Blast Toys. Oh joy. Don't fail me now, Fly! Because if you fail me now, I'm going to be pissed. Like, I really couldn't handle it. So, like, I couldn't spend a lot of time listening to Nathan Oakley. Um, he's a flat earther you can find on YouTube. I honestly wouldn't advise listening to him, though. He has such a smug voice, you just want to punch him in the face. Like, I'm not even kidding. Every time I listen to him talk, I just want to take him out back and, like, just punch him repeatedly. He just has one of those voices that makes you want to beat the crap out of him, because he sounds so smug and arrogant. <sighs> First, I was recently watching a video talking about, um, one of Quantum Racers on videos, another flat earther that hangs out with Nathan Oakley on their daily debate show. Um, and Quantum Racer is talking about how the sun's counterintuitive to him, since, you know, it goes from the core where it's hot to the surface, you know, where it's cooler. That makes sense enough to him, so he's like, fine. But then it goes from the surface to the atmosphere of the sun, like, it gets hotter again. And this is counterintuitive to him, so he starts screaming, it's bullshit, and breaks the second law of thermodynamics, which he doesn't even properly understand anyway, but he's screaming bullshit, and he's like, I can't explain why it's bullshit, it's just bullshit, because it's counterintuitive, you know? And that's his whole explanation for why it has to be wrong. But something being counterintuitive doesn't make it incorrect. Like, as they were showing um, this one episode of how the universe works, and they're talking about Pluto, they were actually showing, you know, how when you take water and freeze it, it actually releases heat. Which they demonstrated by getting water, you know, was super critical, so it was at 30 degrees. So they then took their thermometer and they stirred it, and all of a sudden the, wa the temperature of the thermometer jumped up to 38 degrees, despite the fact the water just froze into a solid block of ice, you know, in a matter of seconds. Um, I guess, uh... Their base estimation for this is that because, you know, the molecules vibrate a lot faster when it's in the liquid state, when it goes to um, a solid state that vibrates less, and this energy loss has to be transferred somehow so it gets released as heat. I mean, it's, com it's counterintuitive to think, you know, freezing something would actually release heat, but that's what happens with water. <laughs> um, it's a really miraculous substance, I suppose. But yeah, something being counterintuitive doesn't make it wrong. It just means it's counterintuitive. Well, that does it for this episode. Till next time, then. See ya.